Welcome everybody to the next episode of Will It Pyrolysize. Now today we are doing rubber tires. In the meantime of me filming this, I have run a poll, and I'm not talking the kind of strippers dance on. I'm talking a poll where we vote, and the next episode will be for grass clippings. And that is because that was voted around 45%. The closest thing after that was food waste. So I guess we'll do food waste after the grass clippings. Now I will say, chopping this tire was an absolute bloody disaster. A, a catastrophe. I tried all the tools I had. The jigsaw, a sawzaw, circular saw. You know, everything. I think it's the combination of the rubber being soft. And the still hard reinforcements within there. As you see, when I chop this with a circular saw or I try to chop it, it makes all those sparks because that's the steel reinforcement. Now, I realized eventually that the steel reinforcement is the strongest around like the edges of the tire, right? So I actually decided, you know what, let me cut around this rim of the tire. And that was a smart move because it actually has very little reinforcement or maybe none at all. And it cut pretty easily. At least in relation to before. I think everything cuts easier in relation to what what I had to do before. So you see, I took the sawzall, just went all around like a Star Wars or something, right? Like cutting these bloody doors open with a, a bloody lightsaber. And I eventually got this rim off. And then once I got this rim, I, I uh, put it between these two bricks. So it's not slaying all over the place like a floppy disk. And I took my circular saw, cut it into little stripper striplets as you see but at the end of the day we got it done and you know that's all that matters now i will say in this video i've had a lot of technical difficulties my dang camera wouldn't stop slinging it around like my camera has this little cover on the front and it kept slinging it in front of it see i, I really i have you know i have rubber in there it's just not a, a large amount but honestly i don't bloody care you know what i'm saying like chopping that tire was absolute brexit and, it, and my nuts were in peril the whole time. So honestly, this will do. You know, this is enough to see. Will it pyrolysize? So if you have a bloody problem with that, why don't you put your nuts on peril and see how you feel? So anyways, let us start loading this in the reactor. I cleaned the reactor out of, um, you know, all the other stuff that was in here. There's really just a couple bits of carbon left. Something I do want to mention. I've read some research papers that have said that... Um, Rubber like this has enough natural carbon contents in it where it will absorb microwaves readily on its own. So with that being said, I'm not going to put any type of microwave absorber in here and we're going to see how it does. You know, normally I always put a layer of carbon in there as a microwave absorber. But this stuff, actually when I cut this stuff up, um, it gave me all this powder as well. This rubber powder. There's some other contaminants in there. Blah, 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 but whatever. So this rubber powder, um, that's gonna, I guess going to act as like a microwave absorber type stuff. And we're going to see how it works. You know, if it doesn't really, if it doesn't really produce much, you know, of course, we'll open it up, add the micro, the typical stuff I always add in there to get the reaction going. But I, I reckon it will, you know, especially with that powder in there, because you know it has a lot of surface area and microwave blood, that type of stuff. Without further ado, guys, let's get this lid on and then we'll get started. So to everybody new here, let me give you a rundown of this system and how everything works. So first over here, this is where the microwaves are produced. This is the magnetron. The microwaves form here and they shoot down into the material. They heat it up here, it becomes a vapor. The vapors then travel out this way and then they either have to go up or down. Now since they're hot and they want to you know, get to the point of least resistance, they're going to travel up and then they're going to run into a steel wool and activated carbon filter which will not only take heat from them, causing some of them to condense, but it also will act as a catalytic converter or filter for sulfurs and all that type of stuff. There's another one right here. Um, and then once again, any oils can be collected down there. After that, there's a water bubbler here, al alkaline water bubbler, to get any type of acidic properties out. And then there's a dryer right here, kitty litter, clay, zeolites, um, and activated carbon in there. 
and then the clean gases then will go into this yoga ball here and when the yoga ball is full of gas I compress it into this modified propane tank now in the meantime a major part of pyrolysis is we don't want any oxygen present this is not the same as an incinerator or it is not the same as burning something at all no flame no combustion zero oxygen so how do we do that well first we need to make sure this atmosphere is inert and we will do that by pumping the oxygen that is in there now out right here like i said i have a modified propane tank full of pyrolysis gas and i'm going to open this valve here and you can hear it flowing through right now. And we know that it is truly going through and then it's that it's uh, a nice airtight fit. If we go through this end valve over here where all the gas comes out and if we can light it on fire. Look at that. So we know that now the gas is coming through, all the oxygen has been pushed out, we can close this. I also recently got this electricity tracker Alright guys, we got it running, it's been about 5 minutes, no vapor formation the first couple seconds, so that was different, but let's open up this port now. Oh yeah, there's vapor formation, let's see if it's flammable. Yeah, it has a yellow tint to it, that must be the sulfur, so I'm, I'm done. Oh lord have mercy. Ooh, that smells horrible, I, I'm out of here. I am out of here. Alright guys, it's been about... Eh, say 25 30 minutes let's see if there's any oil what okay I don't know if that oil oil that was just in there from before or if that was actually from the tires but if the tires actually give me oil that is so interesting to me now something I also have observed with these tires um is the amount of gas production, okay? So you saw there when I opened up that port, just how much gas right up flowing out. Let me do it again so you can see better. Just look at all that, right? Now, I'm not I'm not trying to breathe all that in, obviously, because that's unfiltered. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is these tires make a ton of gas. You see the yoga balls filling up quite a bit. So first of all, the vapor of this gas for the tires is not completely invisible. It's hardly visible. But I can still see it, unlike the the, the, um, the plastic one. But it does light, and it's pretty much the same thing. It smells pretty similar. But I will say, guys, um, initially, when I first had this thing running, you see, it's hardly visible now. But it was actually pretty visible before. It was like gray coming out of all of these filters. I didn't clean or change my filters before I put the tires in there, and I should have. So I actually did a last minute scramble and opened up this and added some steel wool in here just to get as much sulfur out as possible because, you know, we don't want to do that. So, um, anyways, that's how it is. And now the gas is pretty clean, pretty pure now. Um, I don't know what the gas composition is because the hydrocarbons and rubber are different from plastic. So I can't really tell you. You guys have to tell me those type of specifics. Alright, she's been running for about 1 hour 18 minutes, 1.8 kilowatts, consumes just under uh, around 25 cents I suppose, right? Well, I would say more like 20 cents. So there is oil, which is really, really interesting. Because I don't get oil from plastics, I only really get oil when I add motor oil in there. But you saw the oil, and it's a really like rich brown color to this oil. We'll, we'll evaluate that a little bit more later, but also in terms of the gas production, there's no catalyst in this. So the gas being produced is from the rubbers being broken down by the, the microwaves 100% on their own. Um, and there's no catalyst, there's no extra stuff in here, it's just as simple as that. Because the rubber has so much carbon in it innately that they absorb microwaves just fine it seems and this has been the first thing in will it pyrolysize where we haven't had to add any type of catalyst so that is great
Alright, well, it's just under five, uh, five hours. You see it's four hours, 49 minutes, 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours. So 6.6 .6 times 12, uh, that's, that's pretty much 80, right? Uh, so that, that'll equal, um, what is that? Because that's cents. Is that eight dollars? I don't know. I have to do the math on that later. But anyway, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and turn her off. All right, let's see how it looks. Also, I re I did redo the math, and it actually turned out to be eighty cents, not eight dollars. So to run this for five hours was eighty cents worth of electricity. So, oh wow, wow, this is really interesting okay so some of it did break down and some of it did not for some reason the parts that did break down the carbon is absolutely just like look at that carbon that's really good quality carbon right there S some bits of rubber still in there but like this, this is like the carbon here it's nice and dry and all that the type of stuff um I guess I should have run this for a little bit longer even though it wasn't producing any more any more um, stuff so maybe I need to put a carbon catalyst in here yeah there's still quite a bit of rubber left look at all this so it's just like I guess the surface level rubber broke down but we we need to go ahead and put a catalyst in here you know how we do it uh, a lime catalyst with a uh, activated carbon catalyst and see how that does so let's do that So as you guys can see, unlike without a catalyst, with a catalyst, we're getting vapor formation literally immediately after starting the microwaves. So we can see it really does make a big difference when you have a catalyst, even for things that can absorb microwaves on their own. We'll let this thing run for a couple hours and come back and check on it. Alright, so I fell asleep. This thing says 15 hours, um, 22 kilowatts. I guess, yeah, I guess it has been 15 hours. I did not mean to run it for that long at all. I fell asleep and I forgot to turn it off. Um, but the yoga ball is not full. Let's see if we, how much oil we got. Oh, well, wow, actually a decent amount of oil. That's so interesting to me how these tires make oil. And plastic really doesn't. And let's see if there are any more vapors. Yeah, it is still forming vapors. Alright, let's turn it off. Alright, so here is the chamber. Let's see what we got in here. After around... Uh, 15 hours, way longer than I wanted to run it. So look at that. Really nice carbon. Really, really good stuff. Um, but despite that, there are still some bits of rubber in there. Does this surprise me? No. Why? Because this design of this reactor is very poor, very inefficient, and it does not allow for complete microwave penetration on all sides. So primarily the top will always be degraded really nice and good, but then under the top, you see we still got rubber chunks and that's what the next design will fix is it will allow the material to be agitated that's really the only way to do microwaves to be honest with you guys because look at this like you know there's good bits like that absolutely degraded perfect and then you just dig down and you get a, a a chunk of rubber um now in terms of what we got from this we didn't get that much gas right you know, if I ran this with plastic in it for 15 hours, I probably would have had two or three yoga balls filled. We see that only is about halfway full on just one. But, unlike plastic pyrolysis, I actually did get quite a bit of oil. Now, let me pour this oil 
into this measuring cup I have here so we can kind of take a look at it and how its uh, composition is. So this oil actually looks quite different from uh, plastic pyrolysis oil, which I don't have any right now because I've been doing some tests with it. But this oil, first of all, it's, ah uh, oh man, I don't even know what the, what the difference is exactly, but I just can tell it's different. I don't know if it's less viscous or more viscous. It just, it looks more brown, I guess, more kind of like reddish, a little bit more red in there. While the pyrolysis oil was kind of just like black. Um, it's pretty low viscosity. I want to see how flammable it is, so let's go and do a little flammability test. Alright, so I got I got a little lid here. Let me pour some in. And let's see if it'll light from this um, so-called plasma. It's not really plasma, it's an electric arc. An electric arc lighter. It does. So that's almost like a spark plug, right? So that means the flash point is pretty similar to gasoline's flash point to be able to light from that thing. Now this of course is probably very dirty, probably the dirtiest fuel oil I have because it has a lot of sulfur in it, um, because tires have a lot of sulfur in them. But nonetheless, it does burn good, it seems to be really nice and energy dense, you know, it's burning for quite a bit of time, a lot of, a lot of black smoke, probably definitely don't want to be breathing that in, I'm going to back up a little bit. Uh, but other than that, you know, look at that. It's, it's a pretty strong flame, pretty energy dense, like I said. Yeah, it just keeps burning, and that's something I noticed with this pyrolysis oil. Even the 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 oil I do get from motor oil and plastic coal pyrolysis, it's very very energy dense. It burns for a very long time. You know, you saw how much I put in there. You know, if I put that much gasoline in here, it would definitely be out by now, but it just keeps going. So, to answer the question, do rubber tires pyrolysize? Will it pyrolysize? Yes, they will. Let's go check this gas and see how that is, and then that will be the conclusive evidence that yes, tires can pyrolysize. Okay, so I have this yoga ball plumbed into here, and I'll open up this valve and then it will make the gas flow out this valve over here because since there's a lot of pressure it has to go through a lot of stuff to get back all the way up to the system it rather just go through out here when this valve is open so then we'll be able to test the gas so I got the valve open and let's see how it looks so there we go that is the rubber tire pyrolysis gas put a little bit of pressure on the ball you see the flame gets bigger uh... it's a very sooty burn probably just because it's not enough oxygen in there and I do want to let you guys know it's been about um, three minutes I'll close this actually it's been about three minutes or so and look this this is still burning over here um, so I just want to let you guys know that this stuff is really energy dense um, and you know it, it, there's a lot of potential for it you know of course I'm, I'm sure that's probably because there's all types of fractions in here really long hydrocarbons short hydrocarbons all types of stuff but regardless the energy is there. It's just a matter of getting it properly to work in the engine. So, I'm going to store this rubber tire pyrolysis oil, oil in its own container. And see you guys next time. Next episode, we're going to be doing grass clippings. So, that's what you guys voted. Peace out. What the fuck? What the fuck?